Today, we're taking a look at the ultimate healer build for Baldur's Gate 3. Let's get to it. So I realized out of all of the builds that I've done so far, I haven't done just a straight healer. And we all know that no party is complete without one. So I spent the past couple of days trying different things and different combinations, and I have finally come up with what I feel is one of the best healer builds that you can make in Baldur's Gate 3. It's extremely difficult to kill, and it has insane amounts of healing and buffs to keep your party alive. Let's start off with taking a look at the stats. So we're going to pick Cleric as our starting class for your starting cantrips. Always just pick your favorite, but I suggest going with Sacred Flame, Light, and Guidance to start with. We're going as healery as healer can get, so our subdomain is going to be the Life Domain. And for our ability points, we're going to go with 15 into Strength, 10 into Dexterity, 12 into Constitution, 16 into Wisdom, and 14 into Charisma. I know 15 is a weird number for Strength. It'll make sense in a minute. So from there, you are just going to level up as normal, nothing special until you get to level four. At level four, you get to pick a, another cantrip, pick whichever one you want, and we get the important thing here, which is our first feat. And for our first feat, we are going to pick Heavy Armor Master. This is going to pump our strength to 16 at that even number where it should be, which is why we started with 15, and we get the Heavy Armor Master ability, which reduces any damage that we take by three, as long as we're wearing heavy armor. From there, it's quick, easy leveling, nothing special, just level cleric until you hit level seven. The reason we want to hit level seven is for death ward. Then once you hit level eight, we are going to make the move over to sorcerer. Pick your favorite cantrips and for spells, I would go with chromatic orb and shield. Chromatic orb is just one of those really well-rounded spells and shield is super handy to not get hit. For our subclass, we're going to pick storm sorcery. And the reason is, is this gives us excellent maneuverability on the battlefield because of the tempestuous magic ability ability that we get for going into Storm Sorcery. And it's literally the only reason we're picking this. At level nine, we get to pick another spell. I would go with Fog Cloud. And then for our meta magic, which is the reason we are specking into Sorcerer, you want to go with Twin Spell and Extended Spell. So the reason we're doing this is so we can twin heal people or twin whatever people as far as buffs go. And we can also extend certain buffs if we feel we need to extend them. At level 10, we're going more buffage here for our spells, you want to go with Enlarge, Reduce, and then we get to pick another meta magic. and for this one, we want Quickened Spell. These meta magics turn us into the ultimate healing buffing machine. At level 11, you get to pick another cantrip. We're going to go with Poison Spray here, and I'm picking some of these for specific reasons, which I'll explain here in a bit. We also get to pick another spell. We're going to go with Darkness here, and if you'll notice, I'm not picking any specific spells that deal damage or anything that rely on our Charisma modifier, because we don't have a very large charisma modifier. So by picking the spells that we're picking, mainly buff spells and stuff that cover the battlefield and like darkness, it prevents us from having to worry about having a ton of points in charisma and we can still make use of our sorcery abilities. We also get to pick another feat at level 11 and we are going to pick ability improvements and we are going to put both of those points into wisdom, putting wisdom at 18. We want to do wisdom because we are mainly a cleric and a healer. Then at level 12, we get to pick our final spell and we're going to go with haste because the haste is amazing. All right, now let's take a look at the items. So for our head slot, we're going with Wapira's crown. Guess that's how you pronounce that. No idea. Don't know. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Anyway, when we heal something else, this gives us one to six HP. We also have the life cleric healer ability, which when we heal something else heals us as well. So this just stacks on top of that for even more healing, making us extremely difficult to kill as long as we are taking care of our party. For our cloak, we're going with the cloak of displacement. This is absolutely fantastic for us because we are in heavy armor with an AC of 19. This causes anybody who tries to attack us once it's our turn to have disadvantage on their attacks until we take damage. For our chest, we're going with the Rippling Force Mail. This causes us to gain a stack of Force Conduit whenever we take damage. For every stack of Force Conduit we have, it subtracts that much damage from however much damage we take. So because of Heavy Armor Master, it already subtracts three from whatever we take, and then this subtracts up to seven. This gives us absolutely massive damage reduction from everything that isn't a spell. For our gloves, we're going with Hellrider's Pride. This states that when we heal another creature, it gains resistances against a bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage. Basically what this does is anytime we heal something, it also gives it Blade Ward for two turns. For our boots, we're going with the Boots of Aid and Comfort, which give anything that we heal three temporary hit points. For our pendant, we're going with the Wound Closure Pendant, which allows us to get maximum healing from anything that heals us 
and it also automatically stabilizes us when we are downed. We should never really get downed, but just in case that does happen, the last thing you want to do is lose your healer. And because this gives us max HP whenever we are healed, that means that when we heal something because of our helmet, which heals us one to six, it ensures that we always gain six HP from our helmet. Then for our first ring, we have the ring of salving, which heals anything we heal for an additional two HP. And our second ring is the whispering promise, which gives us blessed mercy. When you heal a creature, it gains 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and savings rolls for two turns. This cast bless on anything that we heal. So now when we heal something, we heal ourselves. Besides healing it, we heal it for an additional two. And on top of that, we also bless it and give it blade war. Now for the shield, equip whatever shield you want, but I highly recommend the glowing shield. This thing will give us eight temporary hit points when we fall below 50% HP once per short rest. This just helps ensure we stay alive. Later game, that eight HP ain't gonna mean a lot, but early to mid game or early mid game, it's gonna be super helpful. Now let's talk about staves because I couldn't settle on a specific stav because there's not a lot or staves, whatever you want to call them. There's not a lot of options there that are really good for a healer. So early game, I recommend the morning frost. And the reason I recommend this one is because it allows you to cast a cantrip if you got no healing to do or no buffing to do a turn. You already have the cantrip anyway, but it ensures that you get Ray of Frost if you don't already have it. And it gives you a bit of crowd control without expending a spell slot. On top of that, it also has the ability to inflict chill on a target sometimes. And if you do manage to inflict chill on the target, it makes them weak to cold damage, which means that your next Ray of Frost will hit like an absolute truck. It applies for two turns, so it gives you plenty of chances to get in some really impactful damage. Now, late game, you got two options. I suggest one over the other, but I know one is more popular. So we have the marker, whatever that name is, and this one is okay. I didn't find it as good as Woe. And that is because Woe lets us cast things like Sacred Flame or Poison or Acid, which is why I suggested those spells, because the target has to make a save on those cantrips. And when they fail that save on those cantrips, we will regain four HP because of the wound closure pendant, we always gain max. And this states that when they fail, we gain one to four. Now, Marka Hushiker or whatever that is called, just buffs a few of our spells and gives us arcane battery, allowing us to cast some healing spell that we would probably be casting very high to heal a target that's very wounded for free. So as I stated, I didn't find this one as helpful. You may, may not, but I would pick between one of these two. I highly suggest going with Woe. So there is one thing I want to point out here, and that is we won't have a ton of sorcery points. You're going to have like five by the time it's all said and done, but we do have a crap load of spell slots and we have two level five spell slots that we don't really have any use for. Sure, you could upcast one of your healing spells, but a majority of the spells you have upcasting them to level five isn't going to make a difference except for healing. So what I suggest doing with this build is every day after your long rest, just convert those two level five spell slots into sorcery points. This gives you more than enough sorcery points to play with throughout the day, allowing you to do things like split haste people or split heal people or extend the duration of a buff or cast a second spell as a bonus action or any of the other amazing things a sorcerer can do. That is the reason we spec into sorcerer as a healer. It makes us insanely strong. Now there's a few other things that I want to point out here that are a little bit of nuance shenanigans with this game. And that is, first off, you want to carry a ton of healing pots on you. Anytime you see healing pots in a store, buy them or steal them, get as many as you can get and always keep them on you. And let me explain why. You heal for a crap load and all of your healing bonuses are procced when you use a healing pot and you can just throw them at your teammates and get all of the bonuses you would get if you were to use a spell slot. This allows you to focus all of your healing on something that's easily replenishable throughout the day or that you can just stock up on really easily without having to expend your spell slots, allowing you to save your spell slots for buffing your party members or contributing to the fight. The other really fantastic thing is you can get right up next to a party member and throw the potion right between the two of you and you will heal for an insane amount because it doubles a bunch of your bonuses that you get because you're healing yourself and you're healing a target at the same time and a just normal base little tiny lowest you can get health pot will heal you for 22 HP. That is insanity. Your person that you're healing won't heal for nearly as much but it heals you for a lot making you extremely 
difficult to deal with in combat. Now, the other thing I want to point out is Sanctuary is insanely helpful for this build because you should never really be attacking anybody on the battlefield. You should just be managing your people, keeping them alive and healing them, and you don't get a ton of actions per turn anyway. So you definitely want to be using Sanctuary frequently, but I do want to point out, and you need to pay very close attention here, if you throw a health pot, it ends Sanctuary. Even if you don't hit an enemy, it's considered an aggressive action and it will break your Sanctuary. So you got to strike a nice balance there between when to cast Sanctuary and focus on buffing and when to allow Sanctuary to drop and focus on tossing health pots around the battlefield and healing. One great thing is, is a bunch of our healing spells and a few of our buff spells are bonus actions and we can also use any spell as a bonus action if we use our meta magic so we can throw a health pot and use a healing spell or some other spell if need be as well. But if you do have to drop Sanctuary for a while, it's not that big of a deal because anytime you heal an ally, you're also going to be healing yourself for a ton and if you're standing next to them and throwing pots, you're going to heal for an insane amount and you're also extremely difficult to hit. The other thing I want to point out is that do not be afraid to split cast or twin cast warding bond because you won't take much damage from the damage that you do take due to the fact that we have so much damage negation. You don't really get hit for a lot when you do get hit and because we have force conduit and heavy armor master it reduces that amount and a lot of the times you won't take any damage at all. And on top of that every time you do take damage from warding bond even if you don't actually take any damage from it it gives you a stack of force conduit. So if you dual cast warding bond on two different people you're gonna max out your stacks of force conduit super fast. Overall I am extremely happy with the way this build turned out. It turned out absolutely phenomenal. It works really well. You are super tanky and hard to deal with and you're an absolute ungodly buffing healing machine for all of your allies. All right and that is going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload other Baldur's Gate 3 videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate 3 content you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.